hello, dear. Well, welcome, one and all, to part five of this 1948 Crosley TV series. You shut up. This will be the final episode of this, and there's a lot to do on it yet. So let's just get started right now. Now you're looking at a couple of controls here that I ordered from Mark Opat. This first one here is the uh, volume control and switch. Yeah. Uh, the one in here is, uh, is kind of flaky. So I ordered this from Mark. Also the uh, 25K contrast control, which this one in here is really flaky. So we got a new one of those. Yeah. Hopefully these work good. It's okay. And we also have a Dumont original television part. This is the iTube 6AL7GT. Holy moly. <laughs> so let's just open the box and take a look at it, shall we? Open it up now. There she is. Ain't that beautiful? Aww. Now I showed you this on part one or part two. I forget which one. But this is not like the regular eye tubes you see on the radios. This one's sort of a rectangular shape. And we're going to see what this actually looks like. We haven't shown that yet. So hopefully uh, this will work good. And we'll see how it works. Looks like a brand new part. Let's get right into it and replace these uh, parts here. And then we can test the eye tube. Here's an old uh, Crosley ad for this TV I found. Now, Crosley brings you big picture television. Not seven, not ten, but big 12 inch picture tube, plus complete FM radio. Wow! Sensational two in one value at a popular price. It's got a one year service and replacement warranty from Crosley. I told you we should have got a Zenith. How about that? You know, I bought this uh, TV on Craigslist and I paid 60 bucks for it. And here's some of the original pictures that I saved. I'm going to show them to you right now. I, I have the pictures right here. This was in the ad. The guy had this advertised for, uh, for a movie prop, of all things. Here's the next one. He asked me uh, what I was going to do with it. I told him I'm going to get it going again. And he looked at me like I was crazy. I guess I fooled him, huh? Uh, is there any new pictures of Myrna Loy in there? Uh, she's my favorite picture star. Now if you notice on this picture here, the knobs have the center painted and on one of the original knobs there's a slight gold paint on there so I'm gonna finish these knobs off with a little gold trim right in the middle there and if you notice this knob here for the tuner now this is not the same size as these other ones this is a bigger one anyway I thought you'd get a kick out of this you thought wrong coming up next Experimenting with Buzz. Don't miss it. Woohoo! I received my relay. There it is. I needed a 5,000 ohm coil. So let's open the box here and see what we get. Well, there it is. Looks just like the uh, picture in the uh, listing. Hopefully, this coil is the same as this one because I really like to uh, rebuild the old one. Instead of just putting this in here, that's not going to look right. Some suggested I just put this on a socket, you know, just plug it in on a socket and wire it up like that. Oh, brother. I think I'd rather just have the old one. Yes! Looks like you can uh, take it apart here. We went dancing. Too much play. We went 
It's in there. What a job that was. So when this coil magnetizes this post here, it brings this arm down, makes contact with here, and then it turns the power on with the wires hooked up on each side over here. What a magnificent achievement. What I think I'll do is, let me take this out. There's a hole here. I think I'll drill a hole a little bit more deep than tap it. This new one here had a hole down there, but it was tapped. So I'll just drill a hole a little bit deeper than that, and then tap it. Then I can use a screw here to hold it from the bottom. Okay, it's time to test it. Here it is. The new coil in the old relay shell. Now this relay has a, uh, a four microfarad cap attached to it and it's not soldered in right now. So I got it over here. I've got the meter hooked up. This uh, should draw about 50 volts, I believe before the power kicks in. And this is the power off the B plus capacitors. Now, I haven't tested it, but I'm pretty confident that this will work, but I'm still a little bit nervous. What's the worst that can happen? Uh, it's, it's a smoke. So let's just do it here. I'm going to bring this up slow first time. Then the second time we'll have full power and flip it on and see how long it takes in real time. So here we go. Confidence is very sexy. Don't you think? We'll put about 60 here. We'll see if we get any voltage here. Starting to move. Let's go up a little more. I heard it click. Maybe you should take a look at this again. Woohoo! 
Beautiful, Chumley. Beautiful. How sweet it is. That was wonderful. Yep, it's been clicked. You mad genius. Okay, that's full power. So this capacitor is uh, drawing 57 volts. And this is the B plus voltage. When you flip this off, so now we have uh, this set for full voltage when I flip this switch. We'll see how long it takes at initial startup for this to kick in. Then when this kicks in, this will kick in. Oh, yeah! Here we go. I'm going to flip this on. Here we go. Ah, it's a good there. Eh? Oh, that's neat. Okay, one last thing here. Shut this off. It's just barely warm. Blimey! I think we got a winner here. Everybody, I think old Buzz deserves a round of applause for this. What do you think? Come on, let's hear it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's test the uh, the iTube here from Dumont. We'll just plug it in here, and we'll turn it on, and we'll uh, listen for the click of the relay. I've got my TV hooked up to the computer. This is the, my desktop of the computer. My computer is the best on earth. Let's put on a uh, video. When it's hooked up to the computer, it looks a hell of a lot better than that converter box. Let's take a look at the iTube here. I think uh, It'll be a lot easier with that. The first one on top here is supposed to be stationary, and the second one is the one you want to uh, align with the top. Trust you. Two hundred thousand dollars a lot of money. We're gonna have to earn it. Ah. Oh. I'll write the name on the bottom of this stone.
You must not do that. Cut it out now, I'm warning you. Don't do that. Come on, man. No offense, that seems like sort of a dumb thing to do. You gotta be kidding me. So, folks, this is ridiculous. I don't know, this is driving me nuts. What a horse's ass. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Oh, brother. You would need three promotions to get to be an asshole. Why? Sure spreading that on thick. Well, I think it's ridiculous. You ought not done that. Well, it's time to put some uh, safety caps in this uh, TV. If you look here, there's a couple of uh, O5s on each end of the line. So I've got a couple here. Oh, aren't they adorable? I'm going to install. So let me show you what's in there now, and then we'll put these in. There's what's in there now. Oh my God, is it twins? Two of these, big guys, made by, uh, I think that says Michael Mold. So I'm gonna cut these out and install those uh, new yellow ones. Oh yes, those are obsolete now. How do I cut it out? Well, there's the two old fives in there. Not pretty, but uh, at my age, nothing I do is pretty anymore. <laughs> Those days are long gone. But it'll work. Look at that sticker on the tube here. Chief Radio and Television, 7304 18th Avenue, Brooklyn 4, New York. That's New York. Can you see Brooklyn? I wonder what's there now. I wonder who's pitching. Here's a horizontal coil. I hate these with a passion, these uh, little adjustment things. See how that one's broken off? Yes. Can't even stick a screwdriver in there. So I'm going to stick a nut oh! on the end of this and solder that on there. And use that. <laughs> Just like they did at the factory, only horizontal hold uh, adjustment. That's the way to go on that. Come on, get in there. Let me see if I can solder that. Let's try it. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> That's better. Okay, I'm going to attempt to make some knobs here. You know, I've got three knobs and I'm missing three more. So I got to come up with a way to make some of uh, these uh, knobs. It's a simple knob. I've uh, polished this. I put some uh, molding clay to fill up the gaps on here and the hole here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of these cups. I'm gonna uh, put it in like this and then just pour in the uh, silicone rubber and hopefully that will work out. How this works is I've got the base here and this is the catalyst. This is the uh, hardener. So for every ounce you put on here, which is one cup, you take one scoop of the hardener and mix that in there, and then you pour it. I don't know if this is gonna work, but we'll just have to experiment with it. Hence, experimenting with buzz.
This knob has been setting for 48 hours. So let's take a look at it. Now I had wrapped it up with some Teflon tape here. Regular tape wouldn't stick to it, but uh, the Teflon tape works pretty good. If I can get it out. All right, let's see what we get. I took this off the cabinet. This is the uh, the mask that goes inside the cabinet, and this is the safety glass. Heavy duty. Now on this, I'm gonna have to fix this crack here. Also, this piece here was broken. So we're going to have to uh, fix this and I've got the cabinet in the garage. Let's go take a look at it. Well here's the cabinet. Now I'm not going to refinish this. What I think I'll do is I'll just put some, uh, some stain on top here, maybe the sides, and then spritz it with a little lacquer. I'm not going to do that much to it. This video is a TV repair, not restore. So I'm going to let the next guy who ever gets this restore the cabinet. I'm not going to show any of that on camera, but I'll show you what it looks like after I get it finished with it. Well, take a good look. This is the last thing you're going to see of the chassis underneath here. Adios. Once I get this in the cabinet, I'm never going to take it out again. So it'll be in there to stay until somebody else owns this. I've got a lot of new tubes in here, so I won't have to worry about uh, the older tubes going out on me. Got the red transformer looking all spiffy and looking nice. Nice! Chassis all cleaned up. So the cabinet is done. So I'm going to go in the garage and get it. And we're going to stick this chassis in the cabinet. There it is. I can see it. I uh, just put some finish on the top here. And this part. I left the sides alone. 
and uh, just uh, waxed it. Not bad. Don't look that hot, but it's better than it was. So we're gonna leave it as is. So we're gonna take this in the house. I'm gonna put the chassis in here. And then we're gonna do the reveal. Don't go away. Well, here it is. After three long months, it's finally finished. I give you the 1948 Crosley Model 9-407. I love it. It's hard to believe it's actually over. There were times when I thought this TV would never work. I'm proud of you. Anybody who's been watching my videos over the past few years knows I've had a crush on this girl since the early 60s, Miss Ann Margaret. Next month is Ann's 80th birthday, born April 28th, 1941. So in honor of that, I want to play this clip from a 1964 movie she made called Viva Las Vegas. For any ladies out there, you can watch Elvis, but old Buzz will be watching Ann. Here we go. She loves me, she loves me not, she loves me, she loves me not, she loves me, she loves me, she loves me, the lady loves me, and it shows, in spite of the way she turns up her nose, I'm her ideal, her heart's desire, under that eye she's burning like fire. She'd like to cut up to me. She's playing hard to get. The lady loves me, but she doesn't know it yet. The gentleman has some affair, as much as an elephant or a bear. I'd like to take him for a spin back to the zoo to visit his kin he's got about as much appeal as a soggy cigarette the lady loves him but he doesn't know it yet the lady's got a crush on me the gentleman's crazy obviously the lady is dying to be kissed The gentleman needs a psychiatrist I'd rather kiss a rattlesnake Or play Russian roulette The lady loves me But she doesn't know it yet She's falling fast She's on the skids Both of his heads Are flipping their lids Tonight she'll hold me in her arms I'd rather be holding hydrogen bombs Will someone tell this uh, Romeo? I'm not his Juliet The lady loves me But she doesn't know yet Simply aware, I'm hard to resist. He's one man I can learn to hate. How's about having dinner at eight? I'd rather dine with a Frankenstein in a moonlight tete-a-tete. The lady loves me, but she doesn't know it yet. Oh, yes, she loves me. Leave that shrinking butt. Oh, she really loves me. Here's one gal you'll never get. She love, love, loves me. Would you like to make a bet? 
I said the lady loves me The gentleman's all wet Wasn't that a great clip? Yeah. Happy birthday, Anne. You're still number one in my book. Thanks, everybody. I'll be back next time with a new project. Something a little smaller and simpler, I think. So I hope to see all of you later. Stay tuned for Dickel's Corner. Good night, everybody. This is Buzz 1151 speaking. Hello, folks. Dickel F. Lockett here. I'm here to introduce an 8mm film made by a young Buzz along with his brother Biz with no script and filmed on location in Hemet, California in June 1968. Here is Buzz and Biz's ridiculous salute to spaghetti westerns. Have a good laugh. I know I will. <laughs> I'm going to kill you. Alas, I am doomed. JB, but this is ridiculous. <laughs>